Okay, hi, welcome to our second lecture of the basic course in stochastic programming. Uh, today we'll have some blackboard writing and slides. And before starting in the blackboard, I want to point out a mistake that was pointed out uh, by Elizabeth Caras here in the um, computation of the uh, expected uh, profit from corn. I had a 100 and it's 110. Mm -hmm. So uh, I, uh, I already uploaded the right version, but well, just for you to know, uh, this is just uh, so uh, 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 the sum of those two. Hmm? It's, a, it's a, a, the, the weight sum of those two options, and then it is 110. <coughs> okay, so uh, uh, now we'll go switch to the blackboard because I want to uh, revise uh, with a slightly different notation, what we uh, did last uh, week, last week, no, last class, and then uh, continue, I will continue with the slides, because today uh, I would like to uh, leave you a homework. Hmm? So uh, uh, I will uh, uh, prepare then the material for the homework uh, by writing in the blackboard. Okay, so what uh, we saw is that uh, when we have a linear program of the form uh, Minimize C transpose X subject to uh, A X larger or equal to B, and we have e X, uh, we have this form. We have written the problem in this form. Now it will be more convenient to uh, separate constraints that are deterministic from those that uh, were uh, subject to uncertain data. So uh, the matrix here had one line was a capacity constraint that was deterministic independent of the uncertainty. And then uh, two lines that uh, corresponded to the uncertain productivity and demand. So we will uh, write the problem now uh, in this form. Minimize well, uh, C transpose X subject to X. Let's write it a little nicer. X belongs to a, a set capital X, deterministic. This corresponds to the capacity constraints. And then we have a matrix T times X larger than a vector H, mm, uh, where T is uh, a, a an, uh, M times N matrix, if X is a vector in Rn and H is a vector in Rm. So for our example, we have two M equal to um, uh, constraints that are uncertain. This corresponds to the, correspond to the demand constraints. And well, we also have two products, uh, oil one and oil, oil two. So why we're doing that is because now uh, T and H are unknown. Mm -hmm. And the notation also prepares what will come when we study uh, two-stage uh, program, pro programs because T is the technology matrix. And you will remember the name, and this is why the, the it's a, a capital T, because it's linked to the productivity, right? It's, uh, it re refers to uh, how we could uh, 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 produce gasoline from the two qualities of oils that we had. So, uh, all these uh, stochastic models come from problems like uh, uh, the one in our example. And so the notation, the usual notation for the variable X, that is the here and now variable, is uh, TX, uh, is T from technology. Okay, so what is the uh, paradigm of stochastic programming? We don't know T and H, but we do know a probability distribution for uh, the uncertainty. Hmm? So uh, what uh, this means that uh, Uncertainty is expressed by scenarios or uh, by scenarios. Mm? Scenarios means realizations of the uh, uncertainty, so different uh, uh, possibilities for the demand of each type of gasoline in our example. Uh, and uh, these scenarios can be a continuous number, an infinite number, or a finite number. So, and we know, uh, so the, uh, we uh, assume that the probability that TH becomes some um, TK HK is PK mm, and is known. 
and this for a um, k that belongs to some set capital K that can be uh, a finite set or can be an infinite set if we consider the continuous case, for example. Usually, of course, in the uh, computations, we'll have a k uh, a finite number of sets, uh, of, uh, of uh, scenarios. Okay, so, uh, uh, and we will also consider today uh, an even more simple case uh, uh, here, uh, that is where the technology matrix is deterministic. Mm? So only uncertainty in the demand. Mm? So special case. T deterministic only H is uncertain and then uh, we will write it uh, we will write the equation then we'll have our equation the stochastic uh, uh, inequality Tx larger than X uh, than H, sorry, instead of writing H of, uh, of C, we will write directly, uh, and since we said that random variables were denoted by Greek letters, then we will write it, write it as Tx larger or equal than some omega, hmm? for omega. In Rm, so it's uh, as many as uh, constraints a random variable a random variable uh, uh, and uh, uh, since we are specializing and specializing and specializing we will consider that uh, omega follows a normal uh, distribution mm? This is because I want to illustrate the ideas and the procedures of the different approaches and in this way it will be a constructive approach and you will be able to implement some models eh, later uh, on in MATLAB during the weekend. Uh, so the question was uh, why uh, I am specializing to the case of a deterministic uh, technology matrix and it is because I want to be able to write explicit uh, uh, probabilistic constraints, just constraints. Mm -hmm. It's for that model to uh, simplify, the cal to make the calculations more explicit even if they are still a little involved. Uh, so, in our case, this means that uh, uh, we know for certain how much oil will arrive from the platforms or from the uh, international market. In the hydrothermal uh, problem, it means that uh, we know uh, how much production will be available from each uh, uh, unit that is producing electricity. It is, it is the case, actually, for the... the a uh, planning problem in Brazil mm, of energy. Uh, it is not the case if you, uh, the, um, if you have snow, melting snow or things like this, then the technology matrix uh, can be uh, variable. Okay, so, but now we are with a T that is uh, uh, not random. The only randomness then is in the right-hand side and it's expressed by our Greek letter omega. Okay, and then, as I said, uh, we will go even further in our specification. Omega uh, has uh, m components. Omega i, and each one has a, a normal distribution. Mm? Follows a normal distribution with mean omega tilde i and uh, variance sigma i square. Mm? Okay, so, and look here that uh, I'm considering each component independent. This is what I said when uh, we, uh, about the, we're considering the variation in the gasoline, uh, in the demand of gasoline of uh, premium type or of standard type to be independent, which is a, a simplification because uh, we, uh, we can think that when somebody doesn't have money to buy premium gas, we'll buy more of the, uh, the standard gas. But well, 
Here we are in this, uh, it, this is, as I said, it's a model. And in this model, the components of the, our random vector have an independent distribution. It's not a joint probability distribution for the vector uh, in Rm. It's for each one of the uh, components, then for i between 1 and m. So I will write here uh, a little what would be if uh, they were, uh, the distribution was joint, uh, if it was, they were not independent. Mm -hmm. the, uh, the joint case uh, is, then we think omega, now as a vector, has a normal distribution with some uh, mean that is omega tilde, and here, instead of having, uh, yes, let me finish. Instead of having a, a standard deviation, we'll have a correlation matrix. Mm? And, and so we will have sigma and sigma t. OK, so we have another question. Uh, omega is your, uh, My demand. Your It's a, it is a, it is a model. Uh, in the in the, so the question is, uh, what's the meaning of a negative demand? In the model that uh, you will uh, uh, use, we will have uh, uh, that the demand is uh, 180, I think it was plus omega. Mm? So it will be variations over the right hand side that we already have. For now, I will write like this because uh, it saves some uh, uh, chalk. Mm? So, and then it will be uh, sound because it will be variations that increase or decrease this uh, deterministic number. Mm? But it's important always to pay attention to the meaning of the model, of course. It's what we were talking, the, we were mentioning in the last class. Okay, so we have uh, this uh, setting mm, that is uh, uh, simple but still complicated enough to illustrate the different uh, issues. So that means that we have uh, the problem, then uh, minimize C transpose X subject to um, X in capital X and T X bigger than omega. And this constraint, the problematic one, has to be satisfied for almost every omega, huh? almost surely we said if we have a, a an infinite uh, set K, then except for all the uh, elements in the set, except for a, a set of, except for a subset of null measure. And then what is uh, handling uncertainty? Handling uncertainty is saying, well, okay, this cannot be solved, this problem. What we will do is to uh, uh, identify our problematic constraints, the ones that prevent us from uh, solving uh, the, the problem. And it will, they will become a goal. Mm? This is a, a goal constraints, we can call them. Mm? It, this is what we want to achieve, but it is not what we will be solving. And handling uncertainty will uh, be uh, different, uh, will be uh, finding different ways of uh, defining uh, substitutes for the problematic constraints so that we get some response that means something with respect to our goal. So the first uh, straightforward approach is the, the, the deterministic. Mm? The deterministic model is the one that considers there is no uncertainty. Mm? So uh, no uncertainty. And this means, uh, for example, uh, that uh, we, we take uh, uh, our uh, our original problem. Hmm? Uh, yeah, yeah. So solve the original LP, and then well, try to explain why things do not reflect uh, the reality. The manager will not be able to attend the demand because uh, the refineries will not have enough oil, and so on. So the advantage of this for a model, there is some advantage, is that uh, uh, it's simple. Hmm? 
cannot be easier. Uh, the disadvantage is that well, it's, uh, the response is inflexible and doesn't take uh, into account any kind of uncertainty. So we leave it there. Now we also have the uh, worst case model we saw. Make it a little smaller here, almost everywhere. So the second model is the worst case. It's difficult to write high. Sorry, it is not nice, my letter. OK, so the worst case model. What do we do in the worst case model? Uh, we, uh, there are different ways. There are fancy ways that is what robust optimization does. And we will do the naive way in this uh, model. Uh, it is called, uh, we have what in the book of Cal is called the fat solution. It is solve uh, the, uh, in uh, replace the uh, almost sure feasible set. So we are we will be proposing models that replace uh, in the feasible set these almost sure uh, inequalities by substitutes. Mm -hmm. So uh, the third solution, the substitute, is the most conservative possible one, and it is uh, solve if you have the scenarios, then solve. Uh, in your feasible set include the constraints t x larger than omega k for all k in your set of scenarios. Hmm? Then you stay sure. You, you find a, a, pl uh, a plan of uh, buying oil of the two types that uh, will uh, um, satisfy all the possible uh, variations of demand. Then, like this, what we, we have is uh, again a deterministic problem with a lot of constraints if we have many scenarios, but still it's a linear programming problem with many constraints. Mm? Since we are in this setting here, we can, uh, and this is why it's called the worst case solution, we can replace all those constraints by one constraint that is Tx larger than the max of omega k for k in our set. Mm? And then it's one constraint. So again, this is a linear programming problem, a deterministic problem. It can be solved. The, we uh, then handle uncertainty by replacing our uh, orange constraints by this only one, mm, a unique one that considers uh, we have to uh, produce enough gasoline so that uh, for the highest uh, demands, we are always uh, satisfying. And then, well, the manager will have to deal with uh, what is left if the highest demand doesn't realize. But it will always have, it will be probably a, a big waste. This is a conservative approach. It's expensive. Mm? And doesn't take any risk. Mm? It is a, sh a, sh a safe one, no risk taken into account. Okay, so there is a, another uh, possibility before going into the better models that are the chance constraint and uh, with recourse that is called scenario analysis. Mm? The scenario analysis is uh, for each k in your set of scenarios, solve the LP that results from uh, solve LPK. That is just consider what you would do if the case event realizes. Omega k, only one. Again, this is a linear program with one constraint that replaces all the orange constraints. It's also perfectly solvable. What do we get? A solution. What do we get then? Uh, we get an x bar k uh, for k in the set of scenarios. So 
this is not a very sound model. It's a very popular one because it's super easy. Mm? But uh, it is answering the wrong question. It, what it helps to know how much we would uh, need to produce if there was uh, a certain uh, demand of gasoline. What we need to know is how much we need to produce in case the demand of gasoline varies and there are some uh, uh, different uh, combinations of demand of uh, premium and standard uh, gas that we can are able to fulfill with our uh, production. So this, uh, in fact, is answering the wrong question. Mm? Gives an answer to the wrong question. Answers the wrong question. But I put it here, it's not even in the slides, because uh, it is very popular. Mm? But now you know that uh, popular things are not always good. OK, so uh, a force model. A force model is one where uh, if you uh, think a little bit comparing the deterministic with the worst case. In the deterministic, we didn't care at all about uncertainty, while in the worst case, it was our major concern. Mm? We went from one extreme to the other regarding how to uh, deal with uncertainty, how to deal with the variations uh, produced by uh, uh, uncertainty. So uh, the probabilistic approach is the force. Mm? Probabilistic mm, model, let's say, no approach. Starts, uh, it tries to answer to the question, what uh, will it mean for us that uh, we have a feasible uh, plan? What does it mean, ex feasible? Mm? Well, and this uh, will be measured by a reliability function. Huh? Uh, in fact, what, uh, if we look at our orange constraints, eh, our almost the, the almost feasible set, huh? almost sure, sorry, feasible set, or feasible constraints, we can write them as uh, x belongs to a set, I think I call it s, let me think, C. to a, a set S that uh, is the set of X in Rn such that Tx is larger than omega for almost every omega, right? And then our uh, uh, problem here will be uh, so uh, uh, minimize the cost subject to x in the intersection of capital X and the set S. Okay, so uh, if we consider now uh, T, then is an uh, M times N matrix, and then it has lines. Mm? And each line, since our vectors are column vectors, will be uh, the transpose of, of a vector in uh, R uh, N. Ti. Mm? So we have uh, Ti in Rn for i between 1 and m, uh, the lines of the matrix T. The lines of the matrix T. I'm doing this because I want to write uh, this uh, vectorial inequality as a sequence of scalar ones. And this uh, then uh, Tx larger than omega is the same than saying that Ti transpose x will be larger than each component omega i of the um, uh, random variable for i between 1 and m. OK, so now uh, I will go to the left. Mm. Where do I go? Here it is too close, right? To the it's better there. Okay. In here. Okay. 
Okay, but uh, uh, let me here, before we, we go into the other uh, blackboard, sorry, let me uh, write the sets SI. It's the set of all the vectors in Rn such that, such that one line uh, is satisfied almost everywhere. So Ti transpose x is larger than omega i. Mm? So for one uh, component only. Then our set S is intersection of all those sets as I, right? So the almost sure feasible set is S equal the intersection for I in between one and M of S I. Okay, so now uh, we have to find uh, replacements for uh, uh, satisfying the fact that x is in this intersection. And uh, the probabilistic approach defines a reliability, reliability function. Mm? Let the uh, function that depends on the probability. Mm? P of x be defined as the probability that, that x is smaller than w. Mm? So uh, saying that uh, uh, we want uh, the fat solution uh, says that uh, uh, this uh, reli reliability function is uh, non-negative. Mm? It's a positive everywhere. We will want a little bit less because uh, a problem of these worst case uh, uh, situations is that we can even end up with an empty feasible set because we are asking too many constraints, we are asking the satisfaction of too many constraints. So uh, what we will do is that we will replace our other set. Ah, uh, uh, here, Tx, ah, sorry, yes, yes, okay, thank you, sorry. Tx larger or equal than omega. So, um, uh, we will replace our feasible set by the, uh, asking that the, uh, this rel reliability function uh, has as a minimum acceptance level. Mm? So we will uh, say uh, for an epsilon mm, that will be between zero and one half. Mm? For epsilon between zero and one half, uh, consider. P of x larger or equal than 1 minus epsilon. Mm? Then 1 minus epsilon is the minimum level of acceptability mm? that I will uh, uh, admit in the solution uh, x that uh, has, uh, has been feasible, uh, in the point x for x to be feasible. So it will have, if epsilon is uh, 0 0.1, then in 90% of the cases, we will have satisfaction of our constraint. Mm? If we add this constraint in our uh, problem. Mm? So uh, consider P of X less than or equal and solve, minimize C transpose X subject to uh, X in X and P of X larger than one minus epsilon. Cool. This is uh, an easier problem uh, than the one uh, than our original one, but uh, it is still not uh, so easy because we need to know how to compute, eh? how to uh, express on what is the the meaning of this constraint. But already here, you can uh, see that this model does take into account uh, risk because uh, epsilon. Hmm? is uh, the maximum uh, tolerance to risk. The perception of risk of, uh, uh, the perception of risk of the person who defines epsilon defines what is acceptable or not as uh, declared feasible, mm? uh, uh, accepting the, uh, as, a, as a feasible point. So uh, for the example, what we have is if we choose epsilon equals zero one, we will be finding a production uh, uh, plan that will uh, guarantee that the demand is satisfied in 90% of the cases. Mm, it's not bad. Mm? 
it's a, it is a very nice modeling tool, probabilistic constraints. It's a very, very beautiful because of that, because everybody understands what is 10% of uh, 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 unsatisfaction or uh, violation of constraints. So it's, uh, it's something that uh, is uh, very easy to explain. Now, how do we solve these problems? This is not that easy. And for the very simple setting that uh, I uh, uh, defined in the same blackboard that I just erased, uh, we, uh, we can do it. Uh, we can uh, make the, uh, have a, a, an explicit expression. But you will see that it's a little bit involved. And it is for a very simple setting. For a more complicated setting, it is only numerically and some approximations that can be done. Hmm? There is also. A little problem, a uh, little problem, no, but uh, concern uh, regarding the modeling. It's uh, we are taking care of risk, yes, because we have this epsilon that says, okay, the 10% worst cases of uh, demand, I will uh, be in shortage, but the 90% uh, less uh, uh, worse, it will be okay. But we don't know what happens with the 10% that is being uh, violated. Mm? It is a uh, a qualitative approach. We know that the 10% worse is left out, but we don't know how bad is this left percent. Hmm? It is not quantitative. Hmm? Records will be quantitative, and this is better. So this qualitative perception of risk. And while in some situations, leaving out the 10% uh, may be bad when the distribution of our uh, uncertainty has a very fat tail, for example. So what we are leaving out, it's uh, meaningful. If it is a very uh, thin tail in the distribution, then it is, uh, maybe it's not a problem. Uh, it is sufficient to uh, control risk and volatility and all the uncertainty by this type of approach, assuming that you can solve it. Hmm? And then to see that, we can uh, then enter a little deeper in the um, in statistics well, uh, and probability. We have some writing here. Okay, so let me check my, to be sure I'm not forgetting anything that I want to say. So, it is, this is good when we want a solution that is reliable. Hmm? This is uh, what is the, uh, it, is, uh, it is not by chance if these type of approaches uh, were used in the Soviet Union. Hmm? because things were, they wanted to do a planning that was safe and in advance without any change. Hmm? Records that uh, we briefly uh, started seeing in the last class will be adapting uh, to changes, while uh, a probabilistic uh, approach, no, it's uh, the X, is, uh, the, the plan that we have is once for all, and we don't have this uh, possibility of correcting by buying gasoline in the market, for example. So uh, it is for this kind of fixed plans, and there are, a model, there are uh, situations where it is uh, sound to model them this way. Okay, so uh, uh, what is called a chance constraint? A cha chance constraint is a constraint of this type. Hmm? A chance constraint. is a constraint of the form p of x larger than 1 minus epsilon, where p was the probability that tx is larger than omega. And we want this to be sufficiently reliable, our plan. So up to our uh, degree of tolerance to risk, that is epsilon. Okay, so uh, now uh, those who study statistics know what is a, a cumul cumulative distribution function, hmm? the CDF. 
a function of the random variable omega is a, is a function f omega that uh, goes from r m into 0, 1 such that for each uh, eta, well, r m is, uh, it is the, actually, it is the probability space. So uh, mm. let, me, let me write it like this. f omega of eta is equal to the probability Mm, of, of omega of c, of c. Let me put c. It will be better. Let me see. I was doing it. yes. That the probability that uh, omega is smaller than c. Hmm? So it's, this is the cumulative distribution function. It measures the probability. And then uh, why we are using it? Uh, because and then so it applies uh, vectors in R m. Hmm? And it goes to zero one. <coughs> that is a pro uh, where the probability can be between zero and one. Okay, so uh, why are we writing it? It's because now we can uh, we have our constraint, our chance, our constraint, chance constraint. Is p of x larger than the one minus epsilon. It is the same than saying then than uh, I will write like this: one minus epsilon smaller than the probability that t x is larger than omega, and this is the CDF of omega of the vector t x, right? It's omega smaller than c. Z here is t x. So. Uh, our constraint, uh, in fact, uh, for uh, uh, can be writ written as find an x such that the CDF of t times x is larger than 1 minus epsilon. Okay, and uh, uh, here comes the magic. We can express this in an explicit way for uh, uh, random variables that are scalar and normal, mm? explicit, more or less explicit, but we can write it in a, in a in we can write uh, down a formula eh? and obtain uh, deterministic constraints for those uh, variables because uh, this involves here for any uh, distribution, this is the same than asking that Tx is larger than the inverse of the this CDF evaluated at 1 minus epsilon. Mm? This minus here is the generalized inverse. You can think that we are inverting. So this, ap this uh, application mm? that from z we gives us the probability. Well, so the inverse CDF, sometimes it is a, a right inverse or a left inverse. So this is a generalized inverse uh, of this uh, uh, probability, uh, the, this uh, CDF function. So. Uh, uh, for those who want the formal definition of the of the uh, inverse CDF of omega is f mm, this minus omega, and I put eta. I think here. Let me let me check. Not to to afterwards be trapped. Yeah, it has to be eta. Um, yeah, eta, it is, because now we come from uh, the random space, so it is the smallest z whose uh, CDF is larger than eta. Hmm? This is the generalized inverse. So you can see that, well, it is why we are writing things like this, because we started with Tx larger than omega, and we ended up with Tx larger than something. So uh, it's, uh, it's close to the way uh, the, the feasible set, uh, the initial feasible set had, except that to compute this uh, quantity, we are getting into this kind of uh, expressions. Mm? And so it is uh, uh, clearly a, a very complicated expression, except for very rare cases. 
and uh, uh, where we can compute, and each one uh, we are dealing with normal variables, Gaussian variables, and that are scalar, not uh, uh, in Rm, but each component omega i. Mm? So uh, then this means, and I don't want to raise this set here, so I will come again here to the left. Uh -huh. yeah. I can go here, it's okay. Okay. Okay, so we uh, have that Px is larger than 1 minus epsilon. It is the same than asking Px larger than this uh, inverse, f minus in 1 minus epsilon of omega. Yeah. Okay, so if, if uh, uh, omega is scalar, and then uh, uh, let's call it for, let's, sorry, let's say this way, for a scalar omega i, omega i with a normal distribution with mean omega tilde i and variance sigma i square, we know we have, uh, we have an expression for the generalized inverse. And it's a nice one, you will see. So generalized inverse. So we will have the generalized inverse of omega i now in 1 minus epsilon. It is the, uh, the mean omega tilde i uh, plus the inverse uh, CDF of the normal with mean 0 and uh, a standard deviation 1, variance 1, evaluated in 1 minus epsilon uh, times the deviation. Mm? So, well, this is uh, uh, statistics. Okay, and where phi then? Uh, phi is minus uh, phi is the uh, CDF of the uh, standard uh, standardized so for a white noise eh? a scalar uh, normal distribution with mean zero and uh, variance one. Mm? And for that, there are tables, so things can be computed here now. Uh, and uh, if uh, now we, uh, this means mm, that uh, we can uh, write a, uh, for one scalar variable, for each scalar variable, eh, so we can write the, uh, the expression, uh, the right-hand side expression. Mm? So, but we have, if you see here, um, here we have a set the probability for each uh, of all the components together. Mm? We want to satisfy uh, our uh, constraints uh, and the probability over the intersection of all the SIs. So we have to do yet another uh, approximation here and say, instead, of requiring that uh, p of x is larger than 1 minus epsilon, we will take each line of our uh, matrix and require that the probability of each line is uh, larger than uh, 1 minus epsilon, of satisfaction of each line, not of all the matrix together. Mm? So. What does it uh, amount to? It's a little complicated, but uh, well, if you will read afterwards, you will. Uh, it's the first time you you see this. It's a little complicated, but it's not so much. So uh, instead of p of x larger than one minus epsilon, we require pi of x larger or equal 
than 1 minus epsilon for i between 1 and m. So the difference is the difference. between asking that the probability that uh, x uh, is in S, mm, intersection of all the Si's for i between 1 and m, larger than 1 minus m, and versus, let's say, eh, we have to compare the probability that x belongs to each one separately mm, is larger than 1 minus epsilon, for i between 1 and m, OK? Here we are asking that we satisfy the demand uh, of uh, with probability uh, sufficiently large. So in 90% of the cases, our plan can uh, attend the demand of both gasoline and uh, a, a standard and premium gasoline. Here we say with probability 90%, our plan satisfies, attends the demand of premium gasoline, and with probability 90%, our uh, uh, plan satisfies the, pro, uh, the demand in 90% of the cases that will be mixed, uh, will be different uh, for uh, standard uh, gasoline and premium gasoline. Here, no. Here is the 90%, the 10% the worst combining of the, of the two uh, demands. Here is each individual one. So they are not the same. This is called individual chance constraint. This is called joint chance constraint. Mm? This is individual. It's a set of probabilities all on uh, variables that are scalar. Mm? And this is pi of x. Then pi of x is this probability that x is an si. And it is a probability that only one line, so ti transpose x, is larger than omega i, only one. Hmm? So uh, then, uh, thanks to this uh, so simplification, uh, that uh, is uh, eventually it amounts if scenarios are independent, things are uh, alike. If scenarios are dependent, things are not. So we will have our uh, chance individual uh, chance constraint model with individual chance constraints that will be of the form let me see uh, I believe it's need a little more here will be of the form then minimize C transpose X subject to x in the deterministic set. And now, each one of the reliability functions larger than 1 minus epsilon for i between 1 and m. But thanks to the fact that each uh, uh, omega i has a normal distribution, hmm? Uh, we obtain a, uh, a linear programming problem, hmm? minimize C transpose x subject to x belongs to x, and mm, ti transpose x is larger than the mean of the uh, uh, omega uh, in question plus some number, a positive number, then if minus 1 epsilon, this is a number, as I said, can be computed with tables, sigma i, for i between 1 and m. Hmm? If we want to go back, yes? It is, a, well, here there will be something like uh, the correlation matrix turning around, and in not all the cases it can be expressed uh, uh, in, um, in, a, in an explicit way, like here. Mm? Because uh, you need to know the inverse CDF of a multivariate normal. And this is not, uh, uh, not uh, uh, that easy to compute because, uh, for this, because of here. You need here to be able to, to make this manipulation. Uh, so if we write it in the uh, 
uh, matrix form mm, to see how we are at uh, with respect to our goal, then this is the same than uh, minimizing C transpose X subject to X then capital X and T of X is larger than the vector of averages plus phi minus one. The beauty here is we use the same epsilon for all the constraints because we could also set different epsilon i's. But let's use the all, all the epsilons. This is the same uh, factor for all the components. And uh, here we will have the, the vector made by, with the vector with components sigma i. Mm? So now this will be a constraint in Rm. Mm? And if you compare, so you see, we have, uh, it's as it is as if we are taking the uh, expected value mm, of our uh, random variable and adding a term that takes into account the um, volatility. Mm? The, the standard deviation expresses this. this so it is, uh, and so we have replaced our uh, problematic uh, and unsolvable and not well defined stochastic program by a linear programming problem with uh, M uh, constraints. So in principle, things are okay. We, are, we, we still have, uh, so we satisfy the demand of gasoline uh, uh, premium and uh, standard, but a little bit more than the average or maybe a, a bit more a bit more than a little bit more, depending on the volatility. Mm? So this is a good uh, model, uh, provided we can do all those simplifications, right? That the uh, uh, uncertainty is um, uh, is normally distributed and uh, with independent components, and we accept as a good measure of reliabili reliability to establish probabilistic constraints line by line in each one of the constraints, not all together. Mm? So good, well, this is, uh, as I said, is a good model, is uh, the probabilistic model, but uh, it's not the last one. The last one now I will pass to the um, uh, slides. Uh, it, is, uh, um, it is very concerned about uh, uh, preventing uh, violations of the uh, preventing infeasibility, mm? because we want with 90% of confidence that uh, we remain feasible. Well, in some cases it can be okay, but in our model of oil production, no, it's not the end of the world if we cannot satisfy the demand with our production, because we have the ability to correct the mistake made by the planner and go and buy outside uh, the uh, uh, gasoline that is missing if there is shortage, or we can even buy oil maybe and produce if the refinery has capacity. So we can uh, correct the uh, the infeasible uh, uh, situations. So uh, uh, probabilistic models are uh, more uh, adequate if we really don't want any uh, uh, lack of feasibility. But in our model, it is also it is a possibility for our example. So let's go and see the other the the model and the the slides now. So now I, I get out from here and I come. I had opened it, well, I changed, uh, close everything. Let's open now our second lecture. Good. So, uh, uh, as uh, uh, we had said, so uh, we have two possibilities. Hmm? One is the model with chance constraints, the other with the model with records. And the model with records, what we'll do, uh, uh, we had also uh, seen that it's uh, this idea that if we lack, uh, if we're infeasible because we made a mistake in our planning, we can uh, look in what is the realization of the uncertainty. We will go and correct the, the mistake. And this uh, involves and then introducing variables that depend on their uncertainty. And this will be, uh, so this also, sorry, we passed, so it's uh, like here involves introducing the variables y that are slack variables that depending on their uncertainty will complete eh, what is missing to uh, attend the demand of each type of gasoline. So these are slack variables and they are in this way. So our feasible set, we will replace our orange set that is 
uh, difficult. And here we had still T that was uh, uh, dependent on C. We can keep it now. It's, uh, it was mostly for being able to write these um, uh, probabilistic constraints that I, I use T deterministic. So we have this set that now has more variables. Hmm? And uh, there is a, a set of variables, of wait and see variables per scenario. Hmm? So if we have many scenarios, we will have a lot of more variables. So uh, now we have to decide, this is the feasible set that replaced, and we have to decide how much it will cost to be in shortage. Hmm? There is a, the, so we take the risk of being in shortage, but there is a price to pay. So for example, it is 7 and 12 here in this example. And uh, uh, that means that we penalize our slack vari variables with this uh, term. And uh, OK, so then uh, now we have to uh, decide. Uh, this is for one realization of uncertainty. There is shortage. We know what is the demand. And then we'll correct by buying this amount. But the plan that we will define has to take into, amount, into account a, a set of different uh, realizations of uncertainty. So for one future event, uh, we have this is the cost as a function of the realization. Hmm? If uh, uh, sigma uh, xi tilde realizes, then the shortage will be known, will be h1 and h2 of xi tilde. We'll need to buy this extra gasoline, and this will be the cost, plus the cost the of uh, uh, making our uh, plan. So we can see the optimal value of this, of this program, that is a linear programming problem, hmm? Uh, as a, a, a function of x1, x2, and of the realization of uncertainty. So when, and what we have to do is to choose x1 and x2 that is good enough for all possible realizations of uncertainty hmm? in our set k. So uh, we have, uh, this is when we let x c vary, this becomes a random variable. Hmm? And we need to find a way of measuring what is a, a, the best plan for all possible realizations of this random variable. And if we make the, dis the um, uh, distribution function of, uh, of this optimal cost, hmm, we have different situations eh, for, uh, uh, different, uh, for different realizations of the uncertainty. We have these uh, costs. Hmm, and you can see here the, the optimal this is like a, a scenario analysis. We have, uh, we produce nothing, we produce, uh, we need 25 of each, 50 and 18, and so on. Mm, different combinations for different realizations, uh, C uh, tilde. And then what we need is to find x1 and x2 that is good enough for all those costs, mm, for all the possible realizations. Well, since this is a, um, an activity that is being done customarily, it makes sense to uh, decide that the cost of shortage uh, impacts in our production plan in expected value. Mm -hmm. We can take the expected value to choose the, um, the criterion. In general, what we, we do is we define the functional that uh, from the uh, goes in the space of random variable C into R that measures the goodness of this cost mm, that is a random variable. And then we'll minimize this uh, measure. It is uh, called risk measure eh? in, uh, in optimization, this type of measure. The uh, most uh, common measure is the expected value, mm? the, the, the first the natural one. And uh, so, uh, it, and as I say, it is good for repetitive events mm? that uh, do not have very extreme variations, let's say. Otherwise, well. Uh, it is because it's a criterion that is neutral to risk. We will see in the, in the course uh, other uh, criteriums that are uh, risk averse, that express risk aversions like conditional value at risk. But for now, let's go with the expected value. And then, since the variables x1 and x2 do not depend on the expected value, on, on the random variable, taking the expected value of the cost is the same than taking the, the, the 
living outside the deterministic variables and taking the expected value of the uh, uh, wait and see variables. So the problem that we will be solving uh, will be of this, of this form. And here we have our feasible set. Mm? We have our almost, uh, our almost sure feasible set right here that uh, we will be uh, representing by a set of scenarios, uh, the set K. So uh, we will have, if we have K scenarios, we will have K, K constraints of this type and K constraints of this type. Mm? And K variables uh, uh, Y1 and Y2. And then we will make the average uh, uh, weight by the probability because we know the probability of each of, each of those realizations. Mm? So the, and this is, again, it is a linear programming problem. We can solve it mm, once we have uh, discretized the scenarios. Uh, if not, if we, have, if we keep the continuous variable, we cannot solve it, right? And computing the expected value is an integral. It's, uh, we have infinitely many constraints. It is not possible to, uh, to compute, uh, to solve the problem. The problem is not tractable for general distributions. But for many important cases, we have k scenarios. Mm? Sometimes it's a sample of some continuous probability, each one with its probability. And then we have a linear programming problem. Mm? We have the sum. Here, this represents the expected value. We will have realizations, uh, xi for i between 1 and k. And then we have our 2 times k more variables, uh, wait and see variables. And uh, we have multiplied by k each one of the constraints that were uncertain. Mm? So it's big. Before we had linear programs with only one constraint. Now we have a larger one. And there will be as many as uh, scenarios. And for having a good representation of uncertainty, usually we want a lot of scenarios mm? because it describes many more situations if you have more scenarios. And then this becomes a very big problem. And it's difficult to solve, and then we need methods. Forward or backward? Forward. We have a question here. <laughs> Maybe somebody is wondering what happened. Uh, no, constant. As variables, ah, uh, bon, uh, the question is if uh, here this is a constant. No. Uh, uh, what I said is with respect to the expected value of the cost is uh, as if I put here the expected value hmm? over C. But with respect to the variation of the random variable, this is the deterministic uh, variables are a constant. So the expected value of all these terms is the same than the two terms plus the expected value over the variables that. But the, the variables are y, y1 and y2. It is not a. So I will write in the blackboard hmm? what is the. Um, the problem, or maybe, let me see if it is now with k forward. Uh, OK, let me, I will write it. I will write it here, how it would be for the, um, our oil production problem. It was uh, minimize 2x1 plus 3x2, I think, and subject to uh, x1 plus x2 smaller than 100. And let me put only one uh, constraint. Huh? I don't remember if it was uh, 3x1 plus 3x2 smaller than, uh, uh, larger than 163 plus omega i of C, C2, I think it was. Hmm? Z, this other one, 2. Now I will convert this problem in a problem with records. Then what I will do, I look here, what is the constraint that is problematic is this one. I'm sorry, here I have to write for almost every C2. Mm? Then I will convert this problem into a problem with uh, a, a linear programming problem. First by saying uh, C2 is discretized in a set 
C21, C22, until C2, capital K. Mm? So then, uh, almost everywhere in C2 becomes, and then let me write it here. This, uh, then our constraint almost everywhere has to be satisfied for each realization. Hmm? Okay, so then I will say here, C2, okay, for K between 1 and capital K. This is the original problem once it is discretized. And now I, uh, I look and say, look, it is very difficult to find X1 and X2 that satisfy all the possible realizations here. I will allow uh, to have shortage. Then I replace mm, this constraint by 3x1, x1 plus 3x2 uh, plus y2, k larger than 163 plus c2, k for k between 1 and capital K. It's a variable. And then, so I can erase it. Mm? Then I have this problem, and I said, what is my cost of uh, having to complete the production because I cannot satisfy the demand in scenario K? It is uh, some cost, uh, 12. 12, OK, <laughs> thank you, 10 Y 2 K. Mm? I have to add it. But this for each possible scenario, and I will count that the, it impacts on my cost as an expected value. So I will multiply by uh, k, mm, k, p, k, and I will sum over all the scenarios. Mm? So nothing is constant here. It, this is a variable. So now I have to, uh, uh, my optimization variables are x1, x2, and y2, k, for k between 1, and k. Mm? There is nothing variable, and this is uh, how uh, we measure that it impacts on us the, this cost. If we have uh, some friends who will give us for free the gasoline, then we don't put here the cost. Mm? Or we can put the maximum. Uh, we only pay the maximum. Or, or the, it is, uh, this is the measure M, that if we know the probability, it makes sense to uh, say, well, let, for this setting, let's use the uh, uh, expected value eh? and multiply by the, um, the probability. It's okay now? Good. We have questions there, uh, Wellington? No? Okay. Okay. Okay, so, but you can see that uh, if we put scenarios, we get more and more constraints and more and more variables and the problem grows, grows and grows. Huh? Uh, and here, well, uh, as I said, the set that we choose of representatives of the uncertainty in a finite number can be a discrete version, it's a sample. Mm? Okay, so the first consequence of this scenario, and this is a model with records. Mm? The records are the variables y. The first consequence of scenario representation is the explosion of dimensionality. Mm? So for the problem where uh, we erase here, we don't have uh, uh, the variables, that I don't know why they are there, by the way, I have to eliminate them, so this alpha and beta should not be here because now we're in the situation Tx larger than H. Mm? Then um, we only have H1 and H2, and uh, what happens is that if, uh, what happens in terms of size, if from our original problem we decide to uh, sample K scenarios, 15 scenarios of demand of standard gas and 15 of premium gas. Mm? Then we have to make all the possible combinations, and we have 225 scenarios hmm, combined because we we uh, say uh, from uh, 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 we choose 
order uh, uh, demands of gasoline of norm of common gasoline and then 15 of them and then 15 of standard of premium gasoline and then we have to consider all the possible possible combinations so uh, this means that we will have uh, 225 scenarios hmm, that are considered and uh, with the linear program that we will have we'll have uh, the two original variables x1 x2 plus the wait and see ones each one per scenario times two because we have two constraints uh, here y1 and one two then two uh, uh, wait and see variables so we pass to 552 variables hmm? with only 15 possibilities for each type of demand and for a very very small problem it's a toy problem this one so uh, this uh, is the same just in yellow hmm? Uh, so, uh, uh, for a very uh, gross discretization of uncertainty, we got a uh, combinatorial explosion uh, in the dimensionality. This is typical from uh, models with uh, scenario representation. There is well, no way out, unless there is only one uncertainty, one variable with uncertainty, some special situations. There is also another problem, uh, another problem, no, another difficulty, but this is good that there are difficulties because it makes uh, uh, it possible for you to be here and for us to learn and teach uh, because <laughs> there are methods and ways to handle this. So the impact is on reliability. Hmm? Remember I said this color means uh, we are going to, once we solve our problem, we are going to assess its quality. Hmm? And let me just, uh, um, before entering into that, let me uh, write here the form that uh, for our uh, problem uh, this uh, written in this way, mm -hmm. what will be the form of the constraint proposed, the constraint set proposed by uh, the recourse model? So five was the, no, the recourse model. Replace the feasible set. by tx plus uh, y of c larger, y of omega, sorry, uh, larger than omega for omega in k. Mm? So we're replacing uh, our uh, goal constraints by satisfaction with some slack eh, for the set of considered scenarios and penalize Uh, the slack variables, mm? the slack, slack is the name in linear programming, in uh, stochastic programming they are called wait and see because they depend on realis the realization omega, wait and see variables in the cost. So this is the, uh, the response or the model proposed by the recourse model mm, to our, by the recourse approach to our uh, uh, constraint uh, Tx larger than omega. So now we come back in here. Uh, and uh, we remember then that we have discretized our uh, uh, realizations of uncertainty and we proposed, we extended, uh, we added the slack variables and then if we solve this, uh, uh, pro this linear programming problem with 552 uh, variables uh, and 222 scenarios, so here is the number that depends on scenarios, we have uh, 38 and 20 mm, of uh, each type of oil. And the cost uh, is 140, uh, where uh, the total cost. Mm? Here you, you see there is the cost, the objective function, and there is the cost of producing the oil, uh, the, of this oil that we will buy, sorry, is 138. So there is some shortage. This means that in some situations, our uh, slack variables, white and C variables, will be non-negative, and we will be buying uh, uh, gas from a retailer mm, to complete our production. So uh, we have these numbers. And then the question is, how good is this X bar that we uh, computed? Mm? It's clearly a point that is feasible for our uh, feasible set. 
That means that for the 225 scenarios of demand that we consider, the production x bar 225 uh, satisfies the constraints. But this is a representation of uh, a continuum uh, uh, variability uncertainty. And then, mm, sorry, it's not very nice, there it became cut. The question is, what is the probability of x uh, bar 225 to be feasible with the true problem, with C continuous, that we know that has this normal distribution, mm? that uh, this omega, for example, or has a known distribution. Okay, so let's consider then that the vector is normal distributed so that we can use this uh, function in MATLAB that computes, here you have the pro it estimates, the probability of a, so a function, and here those are independent or not? Can be independent or? Uh, so uh, uh, we are, uh, so this is the feasible set evaluated our, at our uh, solution and we consider different, uh, 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 that the right hand side varies with the normal distribution, now the continuous one. And then MATLAB has this function that estimates the probability. Mm? So the probability that this uh, X bar is, uh, uh, satisfies the demand, this production plan satisfies the demand, is rather high. Eh? And we have in 91% of the cases we will be satisfying the demand. Okay? So uh, here is the MATLAB command, eh? because for the homework you will need to, to do it. Okay, very well. So with the recourse model, it's not too bad in terms of reliability. We can do the same for the deterministic uh, uh, model and the worst case. The deterministic had that solution 1836, remember, and worst case, uh, it, it's somewhere that we will have the table now. So we can play the same game, where instead of putting uh, x bar, the, the, the one that comes from the recourse model, we check x bar that was provided by the other approaches and see what is the probability. Well, and here is a very telling uh, story. The deterministic is feasible only in 25% of the cases. Eh? Look at the last column. This is an important one. Mm? And well, it's, it's okay because we didn't take into account any, any uncertainty. So, of course, it has to be bad. Now, the worst case is the other extreme. The, it's, uh, it's always feasible mm? because we took into account too much uncertainty. Well, recourse, it's good because it stays in between, let's say. It gave us uh, 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 the possibility of uh, well, correcting mistakes and we are still rather reliable. Hmm? And if we want to be more reliable, what we will do in recourse? We will use more scenarios. Hmm? The problem will become, of course, more uh, 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 dimensionally larger and more difficult to, choose, to, to solve. Mm? This game can be played until a point where you cannot solve your linear program anymore and then uh, well, you will get a solution that you cannot really trust. So what you, ha you have to find a, a scenario representation that is sufficiently uh, good f uh, for giving a good statistics or good reliability, but that is makes the uh, problem, the model, solvable by your computer. Mm? It's, uh, as usual, a trade-off. Okay, so it is a good model for this production of oil, example, because we can always go and buy, we can always correct eh, our, our uh, uh, wrong decisions when the realization uh, of uncertainty well, is too different from what uh, we had uh, uh, taken into account. Mm? So if shortage happens, we will go and buy gasoline. But for some applications, there is no recourse. Mm? And here we have a very tragic uh, uh, sentence here, uh, that was Wellington <laughs> came up with, there is no record for lost lives. Mm? So for models where uh, we are trying to prevent some catastrophe or uh, a dam, we are building a dam and the dimensions of the dam, uh, uh, well, if they are not well planned, uh, then the, uh, they can flood you know, a, a place or, uh, well, they, the wall can break if it is not strong enough, uh, the wall of the dam. So in those cases, there is no record. The, thing, the, the planning has to be done without mistakes, with, without corrections. Uh, and then for these models, for these uh, pre, uh, 
situations, the best models are the models with probability probabilistic constraints. Mm? So uh, when feasibility is seen as safety mm, is more important than optimality, which happens in those cases, then uh, uh, it's more sound to use probabilistic constraints, mm, the model that we start uh, uh, we, we started th this class with. Mm. So uh, for our example, what it means that uh, we are in a place, the, the manager is in a place where there is no gasoline uh, around to buy from any provider because nobody wants to sell to this guy anymore. Hmm? No, no, something like this. Then there is no recourse. It has to be uh, done uh, uh, with uh, enough reliability. The, the, the plan has to be made and has always to attend the clients because maybe the clients already got tired of this guy always making mistakes. Who knows? Hmm? So uh, in this case, we write a, um, a probabilistic model with chance constraints, as I explained before. Hmm? Here. So uh, because uh, the right hand side was supposed to be normally distributed, we can write this constraint. Mm? And we are having here epsilon equal to 0 0.05. So our, uh, we want a reliability of 95%. So we can write the probabilistic constraint using this uh, formulation. Uh, and uh, if we solve, right, so we get a linear programming problem. So this will be written as the constraint uh, uh, larger than the average plus this term that involves the standard deviation. Then if we solve the problem, OK, with specialized method, it's a linear programming problem. Then we get this solution. Hmm? Uh, oh, yeah, sorry. It's, it's linear if you uh, assume it's an uh, individual chance constraint. Yes. Uh, okay. So uh, okay. Then it is not that case. It is another one. And then here you need uh, a special problem program. Because it's not mm -hmm. yeah. mm, probably you can too, but what it's a, a um, here is twenty one thousand. Uh, Something is it's too wrong, no? Eh? Twenty one eh? dots. Ah, okay. It's a, okay because it's too much. Yeah. <laughs> too much of imported gas. Okay. So, uh, but uh, and then we have this cost. So now we have this is our uh, production plan with uh, the with uh, the probabilistic constraint, mm? and uh, the the point that we found is feasible for our. our uh, problem, so it is 95% reliable. It's a very good uh, uh, program. Mm -hmm. So we can compare now the, all the uh, optimal values. Mm -hmm. You see there are variations, and the uh, uh, yeah the optimal values and the cost of each one of these uh, and their feasibility. Mm -hmm. And well, it is rather moral, I would say, because for. Uh, if you have, uh, if you want to be very sure of feasibility, then you have to pay for it. Mm? It is a more expensive, the worst case. While if you don't care about feasibility, it is, uh, it is, uh, it is cheap, but you will be uh, in trouble 75 percent of the of the time mm? at this measure. Well, in this way. So, uh, uh, and this is uh, something like in between. It is more expensive because here it is more reliable. Maybe put in 90% or 91.2, uh, we could have compared. Is there any asymptotic bound that relates the cost from the uh, 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 average There is a question going on. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> OK. Uh, so uh, the question is if there is uh, an asymptotic bound between the records problem and the problems with just constraint. I don't know, because I, I, I don't think so. Because uh, uh, it is uh, the different model. You would have to ensure that uh, uh, eventually all the weight and C variables y are zero. No? Something like this in the records model to become close to the chance constraint, because this one doesn't have. So I don't know. I think, I think no. I think that the answer is no. So uh, um, good. So now you know all the models, I think. Uh, well. Uh, uh, yes, um, something that uh, I should say, yes, as uh, Wellington pointed out, is that uh, when we take all the uh, mat matrix, all the constraints together inside of the probability, this is a joint chance constraint problem. And for the case of the uh, random uh, variable that has a normal distribution, but now seen as a vector, 
this gives a conic problem, mm, second order o cone problem. It's no more a linear programming problem because uh, in this constraint, it is somewhere here. Uh, no, I don't have it, but we had uh, a constraint mm, here of the form uh, Tx was larger than W plus uh, phi minus 1 of 1 minus epsilon, and here we had the vector of all the components of the standard deviation. Well, here it ent we, we will have something like the, uh, the variance, but there will also be, it, the term that comes here has a form the square root of x transpose sigma, sigma transpose x, eh, or some factor of this. So we have a constraint that has a, uh, a square root like a, of, a, of x squared, so like a norm. And this is a difficult constraint. It's no longer a linear programming problem. It is a second order cone problem with linear uh, uh, objective. And this is where the specialized methods uh, come into place hmm? that uh, uh, were used to solve this uh, example uh, before because all the constraints were together. For the homework, you will not have to use uh, to take the probability over all the constraints, but only over the, um, each individual probability. So uh, uh, as uh, it's written here, computed uh, probability numerically, it's only possible for few cases. Mm? Or otherwise, we make approximations. Uh, and another issue is that the feasible set is not convex, mm? for depending on the distribution. The distribution has to be log concave. And so uh, there are, uh, depending on the distribution of uncertainty, uh, things get really nasty. Mm? And when the random variable is discrete, like uh, uh, as we, uh, we, when we choose those scenarios, the problem is a mixed integer, uh, a nonlinear programming problem. So it is uh, really, it's a very good source of uh, examples for people who like to develop algorithms in nonlinear optimization, because it is really a very challenging problem uh, uh, if you put some probabilistic constraint. Good, so we are getting to the end, and uh, well, as I said, we need uh, specialized methods, and then here comes the homework. Hmm? It's uh, just one more slide and a little bit of the homework. So, uh, uh, well, this, this was not what was meant here. I will put the right one. Huh? This was uh, meant to see, say a normal distribution uh, with some uh, mean and some uh, uh, deviation. So I will put, uh, we will upload the right version in the, in the, uh, in the uh, uh, web page. So we'll have the right hand side uh, uh, demand that varies with, uh, according to some normal distribution. And then what we would like you to do is to generate case, scen case scenarios of demand that can be dependent or independent and solve the models. You can use MATLAB or OCTAV, mm -hmm. depends what is it that you have on your computer, and solve the deterministic model, the worst case model, make scenario analysis, and the chance constraint, as I showed there, with individual chance constraints and with records, uh, with a very high, sh high uh, shortage uh, uh, cost. And then uh, try the models first with one scenario, and this is the sound thing when you try, when you implement uh, some model in your computer, first try the simplest case, and see if things uh, are sound. Then try with 10 scenarios. If the computer you're using can handle it, and MATLAB, try with 100 scenarios. Mm? And compare. Mm? Compare, as we uh, these tables that we did, the different optimal values and the solutions found, uh, found and to uh, assess the quality of the solution, then use the re reliability function for each one of these optimal uh, plans that we are found with using the function MVN CDF that was uh, in, the, in the slides where, where it's written there, the command, how to use it. Okay, so with that, we finish then our class. Thank you, everybody, and then see you next week.